Why exactly do we do science? What is the ultimate purpose here? Now, fundamentally, for me personally, it was always to figure out what exactly is this for? What are we doing on this planet? What exactly is the purpose for all of these organisms? And where exactly did all of this come from? But one of the bigger questions I was trying to answer being, who are we? What is a human being in a nutshell? Now, this is a very loaded question, and I'm not going to be able to answer it in this video, but I can definitely start. Because if I compare myself, or I guess you, to, for example, a set of Legos, all of us are made out of these individual pieces, with each piece made out of something else. But by looking at the collection of these pieces together, one of the first things that might blow your mind is the fact that human beings are an amalgamation of everything together, where all sorts of viruses and bacteria all working together to create a single thing. Our body is of course made out of different tissues, and every tissue is made from individual types of cells. But furthermore, every one of these cells is made out of amalgamation of other stuff, with many functions inside the cell performed by ancient viruses and other functions performed by ancient bacteria. Bacteria that somehow became integrated into almost every cell inside our body. And so basically here, if you were to take a single cell from your body, if you were to zoom into it, in order to take a look at it under a microscope, you would discover that inside of it there is just a huge collection of stuff that seems to come from various sources. And one of these unusual structures, I guess the more mysterious structure, is what's known as the mitochondrion. An organelle you can find in almost every cell in more complex life, including animal, plant and fungi life, that's essentially responsible for aerobic respiration, or basically turning oxygen into molecules of energy known as ATP, which is why they've been described as a kind of a power factory for various cells in our body. And although some cells, like red blood cells, seem to lack these types of structures, this is definitely an exception to the rule. The vast majority of complex life possesses mitochondria in order to create energy. Structures that over time acquired other functions as well, for example signaling inside the cell, also controlling the cell cycle and even cell death. But what makes mitochondria so unusual and so interesting is the fact that they seem to have come from the outside they seem to actually be ancient bacteria. And so, hello wonderful person, this is Anton, and in this video we're going to be discussing a really intriguing paper that performs a very intriguing analysis trying to find bacteria that might be similar to mitochondria inside complex eukaryotic cells. Or in other words, trying to discover exactly where mitochondria came from and what other cells might be similar to it out there on the rest of the planet which would also confirm that we are an amalgamation of different types of life all in one single organism – viruses, bacteria, and possibly something else. But before we start, let's discuss some other important properties of mitochondria. Now, first of all, intriguingly, we know that certain body parts, such as the liver, contain huge amounts of mitochondria in them. Here, a single cell can actually contain up to 2,000, which represents approximately one-fifth of the entire volume. And in some cells, mitochondria even form part of the structure, basically integrating into the entire cell. But in most cells, they seem to be just another organelle sort of floating around inside the cell. And though other organelles probably have their own intriguing origin, what makes mitochondria particularly interesting is the fact that they also contain their own DNA. And not just any DNA, DNA that's very similar to a typical primitive prokaryotic cell or basically similar to a lot of different bacteria out there. Now, obviously, finding bacteria inside our bodies is not something unusual. As a matter of fact, as I mentioned in one of the previous videos you can find in the description, inside your body, if you were to count actual individual cells, you would find more bacteria than your body cells, with most of them present inside your intestine, and quite a lot of them present on your skin. What makes mitochondria different is the fact that they seem to be inside the cells. They don't just live inside our intestines, they've become an irreplaceable and an integral part of pretty much all cells in our bodies. With most biologists today accepting the idea known as endosymbiotic hypothesis as the explanation for why they exist. Here the explanation is, I guess, relatively simple. At some point, maybe 2 billion years ago, several ancient bacteria somehow ended up inside various formations similar to early cells, 
which probably involved several bacteria collaborating in order to survive harsher environments. But over time through evolution, they perfected the structure forming individual cells that became first eukaryotic cells. More complex cells that possessed a lot of different structures, but were also able to perform things that other cells could not perform. And some of these cells eventually joined in, becoming multicellular organisms, but in the beginning, it was most likely the collaboration between bacteria and potentially something else that created these first complex cells. With mitochondria responsible for production of energy, and other bacteria potentially responsible for protection or something else. And something very similar might have happened with plants and the evolution of organelles known as chloroplasts, with slightly different bacteria producing chloroplasts responsible for conversion of light into energy. And though it's not certain when all of this happened, it's believed to have occurred anywhere between 1.7 to maybe 2 billion years ago, or maybe sometimes later. Either way, because the DNA in mitochondria and chloroplasts is very similar to typical bacteria, it's very difficult to explain this in any other way. But over time they did lose a lot of genes, with many now containing just 30 to maybe 40, mostly because they did not require other genes in order to survive inside various cells. Intriguingly, a few years ago, we've discussed at least one organism discovered not so long ago, this is known as the Monosercomonoides, that was discovered to have actually lost its mitochondria over time. This was a pretty big discovery, and the video in the description describes this in a little bit more detail. Likewise, at least one other complex organism that you see right here, somehow managed to actually maintain its mitochondria that have actually lost their DNA. In other words, they became fully integrated into the cells themselves. In this case, because this is a parasite, it might have just lost genes over time, like it usually happens with a lot of different parasites. And strangely enough, a lot of different unicellular organisms over time changed their mitochondria into separate structures in order to give them other functions, implying that these structures lost their independence long time ago. It would be really difficult to imagine that this is a bacteria, as opposed to a typical organelle, part of a much larger structure. But the biggest question of them all is, where did they actually come from? Or I guess more specifically, can we find bacteria that might have been similar to this, or potentially mitochondria's cousins? Do they still exist somewhere on the planet? The answer is yes. And the scientists in this recent paper might have finally discovered one of the cousins of the iconic mitochondria. With a study you can find in the description, representing a huge survey of thousands of different bacterial genomes in order to discover the closest match to a typical mitochondrial precursor. Basically, this was the most thorough search ever done when it comes to comparing bacteria to something inside our cells. And here they did this by studying genome of a lot of different modern bacteria. But the main focus was on something that we usually associate with mitochondria only. Because there are at least two compounds, or lipids, that seem to be produced by mitochondria found in every organism on the planet. One of these is known as cardiolipin, and the other one is known as sphingolipid. The genes for both present in all mitochondria in every organism, but also surprisingly found in certain bacteria. And so here the point was to try to discover a bacterium that seems to match the best. Because if certain unique genes present in mitochondria are also present in a bacterium, this would imply a common ancestor billions of years ago. And eventually they found at least a few, with one having the best match. A type of a marine bacterium that seems to be present in many different hot springs around the world. The genus known as Idodimonas. Something that was actually discovered not so long ago, with one of the studies in the description providing more detail. And this bacterium was first found inside a natural gas water that contained huge amounts of salt, but also very high amounts of iodide, which explains the name. Bacteria that seem to really enjoy iodide and even use it for protection against other bacteria. And in terms of functions and genetics, it seemed to match the best. And visually, it almost even looks like mitochondria. But what's really important here is that this is not a common bacterium. As a matter of fact, this bacterium lives in a very specific niche. Niche involving very different levels of oxygen, and also niche that might be similar to ancient oceans on Earth, containing a lot of primordial elements and a lot of very extreme environments. 
although in this case this bacterium was also isolated from certain locations in various oceans enriched in iodide. Intriguingly, this bacterium seems to be able to use iodide to form a toxic compound that it then uses to destroy competition. And so there's at least one suggestion where scientists think they can use this to create new antimicrobial systems in order to efficiently kill various very dangerous bacteria. But when it comes to the origin of complex cells, this sort of presents a really interesting case. It basically suggests that these ancient bacteria that would only survive in a very specific niche at some point might have found themselves in a unique environment where they were then able to collaborate, creating a larger complex in the process. And so because now they didn't have to worry about protection, they might have eventually lost a lot of their other genes, with their only purpose now being formation of energy. And maybe a few other functions like for example signaling. And so one really surprising discovery from this study is the fact that all of these bacteria that were similar to mitochondria seem to all live in very exotic environments with very different levels of oxygen and usually in niches that would be extreme for anyone else. A discovery that hopefully will help us understand the overall evolution of complex life on Earth and of course take us a little bit closer in answering questions about astrobiology and if life exists somewhere out there. And if so, what kind of a life would it be? But the main conclusion here is that some life that wasn't successful before learned to collaborate with someone else in order to become super successful, forming something that's more complex than anything ever before. But that's of course just the beginning of trying to understand what's happening here and how all of this might have formed. Or I guess, if it can form anywhere else. But chances are that in the next few years, scientists might find even better candidates with even more similarities to typical mitochondria. For now, this is just one of the first such studies with some of the first such results. Nevertheless, still super interesting and quite intriguing when it comes to biology and the origin of life on planet Earth. So for all we know, maybe this is indeed the ancient cousin of tiny little cells that live inside each of us and provide us with energy. But I'm sure we'll learn more in some of the future studies in the next few years. And so until then, thank you for watching, subscribe, share this with someone who loves learning about space and sciences, come back tomorrow to learn something else, support this channel on Patreon by joining channel membership or by buying a wonderful person t-shirt you can find in the description. Stay wonderful, I'll see you tomorrow, and as always, bye-bye.